Hello, my name is Erica Ewert, and I am your Career Services Coordinator. I am a district employee, so I do serve all three campuses. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how do you build a resume? So first thing you need to know is the purpose of the resume. Well, the purpose of the resume is to assist in obtaining an interview. It's to provide a summary of your education, of your work experiences, of your coursework experiences, your skills and your goals. And it's to initiate the first contact and provides a first impression. Um, I want you to think about the goal of your resume is to show your best self. So a resume is a very fluid document, meaning that it's constantly changing. There are new trends that are coming about all the time. And so today what we're gonna talk about is the newest trends. So what not to do on your resume? So I don't want you to over-design your resume, meaning don't add a picture, don't add colors, don't use multiple fonts. Uh, as of today, you don't include an objective or a personal summary. Although if you're madly in love with yours, go ahead and keep it. I don't think it's gonna stop you from getting an interview. You're not going to use pronouns such as I, me, mine, or ours, and you're definitely not going to put those in paragraph form. You're not going to go back more than 15 to 20 years, except for if you have an experience that you've done in your past that's going to be relevant to the job that you're applying for now. You're not going to go over two pages, and you're not going to include your full address. Your city and your state are just fine. I need you to keep in mind that an employer is only going to look at your resume for about 10 to 20 seconds. So we want it to be very clean, concise, and simple to read. Now, what should you do? Well, you should show a position overview, meaning you should include any teams or any projects that you've worked on, anything that you're really proud of that's going to show an employer that you know how to do the job. You're going to create a section to show that you possess the required skills that the job description is asking for. You're going to put it in chronological form, meaning you're going to start with your most present job and work your way backwards. Same with your education. If you have multiple um, experiences in, in completing an education or a certificate or diploma program, you're going to start with your most recent. You're going to explain any gaps in employment, but you do that creatively, and mostly you're going to do that through your cover letter. You're going to remove any older experiences that are not going to be relevant to the job you're applying for. And you're going to be sure to include in a LinkedIn profile if you have one. Now, there are main, three main uh, parts to a resume that we want to make sure that you include. These three main parts have to be there, but you can add anything else um, that you'd like to on your resume to be uh, a little bit more unique or make it more to your liking. The top three things that you need to add are first your header. And in your header, that's gonna be your name, your city and your state, an active phone number. So a phone number that has an active voicemail box that's set up that you're going to check. An active email. So an email that is an appropriate email and one that you're going to check. And then if you have a LinkedIn account. Next, you're going to put your education down. So again, chronologically, you're going to put your most recent education experience first. You're going to include the full title of what it is that you're graduating with. If you're unsure, I encourage you to go to our website to check that out. So for example, if you're graduating with an Associate of Arts or an Associate of Science, you're going to put what it's in. So an Associate of Applied Science and Agribusiness Management or an associate's degree of arts in this program, or perhaps it's a diploma or a certificate. Then if you're not gonna graduate for a while, but you're gonna be utilizing your resume, then you're gonna put an expected graduation date of. Notice here it says expected of May, 2027. Then you're gonna do your work experience or your coursework experience. It's okay if you don't have work experience, and we'll get to that. But this is what I call the meat of the resume. This is where it's going to give an employer the understanding and show them that you have the experience to do the job that you're applying for. On here, you'll see that it says um, the employer was pioneer, the position was a detassler, it says the city and the state, and it showcases the month they started and then the month they completed or if it's still present day work. They have three bullet points there, and we're going to start talking about the importance of those bullet points. So 
The importance of the bullet points is to give a good description of the work that you have done in the past and to show an employer that you can do the work that they're looking for. We have a formula that is skill or action verb, what you did or how you did it, and why or the results. So you're gonna use a strong action verb, something like create, manage, analyze, coordinate. Then you're gonna say what you did or how you did it, managed a group of individuals, and then the why or the results. Manage a group of individuals to ensure that a customer's list or products were created in the manner that they intended and ensure that shipping and product availability was done correctly. That's a long way of saying what we're trying to do is what is the skill, what is the why or how, and then what is the end result. Some of you may have a skills portion on your resume and that's okay. But what we need to do is make sure that the skills that you have listed are not what we call transferable skills or not employability skills, meaning things that you can't prove. So on here, you'll see that there are skills that are related to the job I'm applying for. So if I'm applying for a health related position, I want skills that are listed that are gonna be relevant to that health position I'm applying. Wound care, tracheotomy suction and care, admitting and discharging, patient family education. Those are all skills that are related to the position that I'm applying for. This is another space where you can put any certifications or extra coursework that you have done that is related to the position there. You should always pull up a job description when you're creating your resume. You wanna pull it up because you wanna see what the job description is recommending for duties that are gonna be required. So while I look at this job description, I'm saying I must be able to record a patient's history, give medication, take vital signs. If I'm applying for this job and I don't have those skills listed on my resume somewhere, then what's gonna tell the employer that I am capable of doing this job? You always wanna pull up the job description so that it's next to you when you're creating your resume so that you can use the same words or use the same phrasing that they're looking for in your job description. Here's a good example. Here are two different resumes that came for the same position. So the first resume says, responsible for treating patients, responsible for observing patients and performing tests, skilled in a variety of procedures. That's an okay resume. However, what if it's the second one? Provided post-op care for patients, such as post-surgical wound treatment, pain management, and infection treatment. Observed patients reported concerns to an RN or a physician on duty, tested blood glucose and administrated insulin. I'm pretty sure that the employer is probably gonna go with the second candidate because it gives more description. So again, you're using that action word, the how and the why, and the results. Now, I said, if you don't have work experience, that's okay because you can use coursework experience. A lot of times we don't know that we can do that, but you should, because what's telling the employer that you have the experience that they're looking for if you haven't had a previous job that related to that field? So what I encourage you to do is go on your syllabi and you will always find where it says course outcomes. This is what's saying what you completed or what you should be able to do or know once you complete that class. So here you'll see if I'm doing a medical assisting uh, program, here are two classes and here are their outcomes. So I'm going to list that on my resume. This tells an employer exactly what you've learned. Overall, what we want you to do is really be able to talk about who you are and the experiences you've had. I hope that this um, presentation or this video has helped you start your resume. Once you get started, if you need a little extra help or if you want me to take a look, feel free to email or contact me. Thank you.